Wednesday, the 31st of May, 2017. What does this day mean to you? Probably means bugger all. You probably don't really think about it. I'll give you an example of probably what it was like. You woke up, mm, sorry, turn off the alarm, shut up. And then you hop on the train or do whatever you want and you get to work. And it's just another day. For me though, this was probably the most significant day of my life and everything changed for me. So, it's any usual day for an 18 year old or what I suspected before all things happened. Um, previously, I had turned 18 two days prior. So, obviously for an 18 year old, you're thinking about your party. <laughs> Everything else that goes with it and then things that happen past it. Um, so, I'll set the scene. Me and my car driving as an 18 year old. Pretty cool. You got your license. Everything's pretty sweet. On my way to tennis training for school and I'm in my car, Kia Serato. I like to call it the little whiz. <laughs> Gets me around everywhere. Other words, I call it my white polar bear. So, and also, probably one other thing I should add, playing a bit of Spotify. Everyone loves a bit of music in the car because you can sing, you might be absolutely terrible, but you don't care. You're just doing what you want. So a bit of Ed Sheeran, Shape of You. That was really a classic hit of 2017. <laughs> so basically what's happened is I'm driving in a tunnel and all of a sudden this car from the third lane swipes over into the first lane and smashes their brakes. Normally the reaction of an 18 year old is, what the hell are you doing? Get off the road, you can't drive. But I know straight away something wasn't right when the guy had his head slumped over the wheel and no response. Oh, well, who am I? Sorry, I haven't told myself. So, my name's Daniel. I'm 20 years old, studying a Bachelor of Business in Event Management at Torrens University, as you probably know. That was <laughs> <laughs> probably a good thing. The other thing I should say is, where am I from? So, well, I'm from Sydney, grew up in the southern suburbs. It's probably something you should know about Sydney. There's a couple of areas, but you've got like the eastern suburbs area, which is Mercedes Benz, Jaguar. Everything else that goes with it, I think you can all add, and brunches too. <laughs> Whereas I'm from a very relaxed, chilled out area, the Shire. <laughs> and what's involved in the Shire, well, the conception is footy shorts, thongs, singlets, a beer, or too many. <laughs> so, <laughs> why did I choose Torrance? Well, I'll scare the idea of uni. Being in a lecture hall of 200, 300 people who you have no idea about, and they probably don't give two hoots about you two. And you just sort of go about your business like, oh yeah, cool, you just do it, and get it out of your way. It's why I love Torrance. It's a small environment, lecturers know you, they're not stuck in an office and they're not scared to ask you questions. Otherwise, you're just another fish in the sea. You're just a number and no one else could care. So back to the car story. Bit of context was I was halfway through exams, midway through year 12, pretty stressful point in an 18 year old's life. And it was the battle between University of Technology Sydney, which is a uni just over there, or Torrance. Do I go the mainstream uni or do I go a little bit out of my comfort zone, try something different? So basically what had happened is this car's braked in front of me. What do I do? As you can imagine, I've hopped out of the car, opened up the car door. This guy's not breathing. His head slumped over the wheel. The first reaction for me is doctors A, B, C, D. You just go do it. Get him out of his car, lift him out, place him on the ground, check his airway. You just got to start. Start doing CPR. So I did, overall I did 400 compressions and eight mouth to mouths, which is roughly about four minutes worth. After probably four to five minutes, it's at that critical point where if the person doesn't wake up, their chance of survival goes down by 30%. Anyway, just a cough. <coughs> Guy wakes up. In that moment, I, it's kind of like a computer, you just sort of overlay, it's like, oh, what the hell's this? 
And yeah, he woke up. And for me, that was just, there's no words to describe it. And just, I just did something pretty insane. And in that moment, I'd show a lot of leadership. No one else was going to stop for me. No one else was, everyone was going past in their car, going about their daily business. I was completely out of my comfort zone, put it that way. A week later, I'm doing the, my final exam. It's maths, <laughs> everyone's favourite. <laughs> and so what's happened is, start the exam, start writing, going to the first couple of questions. And then the situation comes back. I replay the whole incident. And this maths exam goes for two hours. And what felt like 20 seconds later, where I had my eyes shut, someone says, pants down. I wake up, I look down at my paper, I've done two questions on the first page, and I've got 15 pages to go. This is the period where it's in trials, and it's do or die for most students. They go, oh, what do I do next? And to wake up from that, be surrounded by 200 of your classmates, and not knowing what the hell just happened is a very scary thought. Basically, got out of my chair, ran down to the exam hall, and just bore my eyes out. I just didn't know what I could do. At that very point, all the boys came down from the exam, and they embraced me. And I'm so thankful for that, because at that point, I was really struggling, but I didn't want to accept it. I said, I'm OK. I'll get on with my business. And then two weeks later, I had to pick what uni I had to go to. So it's just fantastic, isn't it? <laughs> so really, like, the big unis everyone would know about, the easy choice would have been to go to this uni over here, University of Technology Sydney. It's a very mainstream uni, and that's what most students pick. Or do I break the mould? Do I try something different? Do I just really get outside of my comfort zone once again? And this is the first time that I get to choose my destiny. No one's telling you to do PE. No one's telling you to do six subjects or anything like that. You control what you want to do. This is your life now. I had to consider my values, my family. If anyone's got siblings that are smarter, you'd probably know the situation. <laughs> so when your sister gets a 99 ATAR, you can only imagine what my thoughts are, right? <laughs> so she picks engineering and goes to one of probably the leading unis here. So yes, sick. You kind of had the conversation with the parents like, we love you, hope for the best. Just <laughs> like, do your best, son. It's like, OK, yeah, thanks, like whatever. <laughs> uh, my friends, they're all going to the other unis. And they're all going like, come on, just join us. Peer pressure is a major thing. And at that very point, I went, I've got to step outside. I've got to do what's different. I've got to do what's best for me. And personal development-wise, it's my time. But at this point, my careers advisor came up to me and said, I went to them and said, oh, I've done early entry for Torrance. You beauty, don't have to worry about the exams. Her exact words were, don't go there. Go to University of Wollongong. <laughs> OK, right. How do you react to that? Like, are you meant to say, OK, thanks? <laughs> or are you meant to just go, no, this is my life. I get to control what I want to do. And I'm sorry that you don't get to make the decision for me. I'm the one who gets to do it. Funny enough, two weeks later, or sorry, two weeks previously, I was at a career expo. And I saw her. It's just fantastic, isn't it? The whole, the whole world goes around. And went up to her, she's like, Oh, hey, how are you? So that moment of, oh, it's him. <laughs> so I said, oh, yep. So go Torrens in my second year, and I'm a marketing ambassador. Oh, isn't that just great, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's that typical reaction of, oh, this kid's done all right. And what have I done? Oh, nothing. <laughs> So at that point, I had to block out, when I was picking my uni, outside influence, blocking out external noise. It's a big thing in this world now. And the final thing I wanted to say is be comfortable with your choices. Don't be a sheep and follow the pack. Be different. Be you.
control your destiny.